Hi folks! I'm Kate. I'm 22. I live on Vancouver Island and I am currently studying underneath Jean Donaldson's Academy for Dog Trainers, um, which is a two-year uh, virtual part-time course um, that has a strong focus on dog training, um, behavior modification, client counseling, as well as class teaching. Um, I'm a few months into my studies right now and I could not be loving it more. Um, I've been working with some amazing dogs and some amazing humans and I'm so excited to share with you all today some tips and tricks that I've learned from my training so far and can hopefully enrich your own dog's life. First up, I'm going to go over some basic gear that I think all dog owners should know. The first of which being a flat collar. Now this is one you've probably already used on your dog or cat before, nothing too special. These are specifically good for dogs that have already mastered that loose leash walking or healing so that they don't provide any extra strain on their throat here which can cause problems with their trachea in the future. The next collar that I'd like to talk about is a martingale collar. Now these ones are meant for dogs with small or slippery necks um, that do escape from collars often or have before. Now these collars tighten to a very, very certain degree um, so that the dogs are not able to slip their neck out when they are uh, looking to do that. I'd like to reiterate that this is not an aversive tool, but rather a safety tool to keep, make sure that your dog is restrained on that leash still. Now I want to show you the difference between a couple different types of harnesses. So this one right here is a back attachment harness. Dog's head goes through the front here and leash attaches to the back. These ones are specifically good for small dogs or ones that don't pull quite as much on walks. The next harness that I have here is an anti-pull freedom harness. Now here we change the point of the leash attachment so that it attaches to the front right at the chest of the dog. Now doing this lessens the efficacy of the pulling and actually redirects their dog's front so that it faces you so that you can gain, regain that focus from them to continue on on the walk. Some examples of some other types of anti-pull harnesses would be an easy walk harness or a sensation harness. Sensation harnesses are geared toward short haired dogs that may find that they have some irritation using some other harnesses. Now, if you're out walking your dog and you're finding that these anti-pull harnesses just aren't cutting it, I would suggest looking into a head halter. These are ones that slip just around the dog's nose and actually redirect their full entire face in forward motion um, so that they turn around and are then completely facing you. Um, one thing that I really want to mention though is that don't just try and throw a head halter on your dog. It is important to do some habituation training so that they become used to the feeling of it sitting there on the walk. Otherwise, they may paw at it, rub their head on the ground, and be generally pretty uncomfortable whilst wearing it. A few different brands that I would suggest to look for would be either Halty, Gentle Leader, or Snoot Loop. Another incredibly helpful piece of equipment that I suggest to pretty much all dog owners I interact with is a long line. This one here, all curled up, <laughs> is actually 45 feet long. Now these are obviously incredibly helpful on hikes, beach adventures, things like that, but specifically they're amazing when working on recall and recall away from dogs and distractions. Long lines are great options for dogs and humans that are still working on that recall um, or potentially play a lot of that keep away game at the end. The last piece of equipment that I'm going to show today is a doggy seatbelt harness attachment. This end plugs into the seatbelt in the car and this end attaches to the harness on the dog. This is an incredibly useful safety measure to be able to ensure that your dog is safe while traveling in the car. It is so important to restrain dogs either using seatbelts and harnesses or crates while traveling in a car for both the safety of your dog and you. Now, I'm not going to go into any aversive uh, techniques or types of gear um, as I am a positive trainer and it is not something that I use um, nor promote using. Um, so it would be my greatest suggestion um, to steer clear of the following, um, which would be prong collars, choke chains or choke collars, e-collars um, or different types of vibrating collars, um, citronella collars, different types of anti-bark collars, um, any sort of leash jerks uh, or body rolls or slams, all of the types of techniques and gear that focus on fear and pain as the driving, driving mechanism of the training. Um, they can lead to some very, very adverse effects um, and ultimately they're outdated. 
they're not the type of techniques that we need to use anymore. There are ones that work better for the vast majority of dogs. And we have the, we have the responsibility as dog owners to be performing what is morally and ethically sound. I'm gonna to touch on high value versus low value treat options for training. High value treat options are the ones that you wanna use in those situations where you are really competing with either a distractor or it is a very new behavior that you are teaching or it is a novel stimulus. Um, so the very first time that you're teaching recall when you're out at the park competing against dogs and smells and things like that, you wanna be using either some boiled chicken breast, some hot dog, some cheese, maybe some beef rollover, those things that are just Mm, mm good, the dog is going to give up everything to come to you. Some options of some low value treats um, would be the kibble that they eat, um, some crunchy snacks. Generally, the ones that take a bit more to chew are not as uh, enticing to the dogs. Um, so those kind of cookies and uh, the those general training treats that you find around aren't going to be as delicious as those human food novel options. Now, if the high value treat options still aren't cutting it and your dog just isn't interested in the food whatsoever, try limiting the amount of food that they're getting at breakfast before that training session in the day. Um, or potentially maybe you're limiting the amount of dinner of the night before as well. Um, not starving your dog by any means, not taking away their food altogether, but just limiting it so that they're going to be a little bit hungrier and they're going to be a bit more engaged because there's food and they need some. One of the best pieces of advice that I can give to you today is never try to train an unmotivated dog. So if the dog is scared, if they're in a fight or flight kind of reaction, if they're in that anxious moment where they don't know if they're safe or not, they are not going to respond to you and whatever you're asking for in their training. They are focused on one thing and one thing only, which is staying alive. That's their natural instinct. Until they are out of that head frame until they are out of that space that they're in, they are not going to be able to behave for you the way that you're asking them to. And it's just going to lead to frustration on both ends. So recognize where the dog is at, where their emotional status is at before you start working with them. This leads into my next point, which is dogs do what works. If they have pulled on the end of the leash to get to that bush at the end of the block a hundred times, and 100 out of 100 times that pulling has gotten them to that bush to smell, they're gonna keep doing it. It's worked for them in the past. They're gonna keep doing it. Until their actions do not work, until they have to make a decision, a choice, as to something needs to change, I need to do something else to be able to get what I want. Until that happens, the dog is going to keep doing what works. So take a minute. Reflect on your own life and your own habits and behaviors that you engage with with your dog. Are you allowing them to do things that are frustrating you? Is it coming back to bite you in the butt? Recognize when you are giving them the opportunity to self-reinforce. If they're pulling at the end of the leash and you let them keep pulling and they get to that bush to smell, that is natural reinforcement. They are reaching that reward and it is going to be satisfying to smell that bush and knowing that they have pulled to get there, they will pull to get there in the future. So take a minute, like I said, reflect on your life. See if there's any situations that you can adapt to set your dog up for success and set yourself up for success too. Have you ever heard about daily enrichment for your dogs? It can help them live their happiest and healthiest lives. And there are things that you're probably already doing that's engaging in that enrichment. So these are activities that engage all of their senses and their brain and their body and are exciting and fun for them. So things like sniffing when they're out on walks, Kongs, frozen Kongs are fantastic. Lick mats um, and different types of engaging interactive toys, um, ones like Kong Wobblers and um, JW Holy Rollers, um, different ones that really get the dog's attention, get them interested, and actually can a lot of the time burn a lot more energy than physical exercise can. So for those really, really smart breeds, um, any sort of 
Australian Shepherds, cattle dogs, Border Collies, any sort of those kind of high energy breeds, these are fantastic options for those households that just cannot physically exercise them quite as much as you would like to. I build daily enrichment into my dog's life every single day, just like it says, daily enrichment. And it's easy. Sometimes it's as easy as just dropping a few pieces of food into a cardboard box full of newspapers so they have to snuffle around and use their nose. Daily enrichment is incredibly important for all dogs, and I highly suggest that you look into the best options for yours. The last thing that I'm going to talk about today are puppies, specifically the importance of early socialization with puppies. So a lot of people don't know, but a puppy socialization window can actually close at 16 weeks or less, um, which means that those early experiences, both at the breeder or rescue, and after um, the puppy has been picked up and brought into their new home are so important to set up confidence for the rest of their life. During this time, you're gonna to wanna to be making sure that you're introducing your puppy to a lot of different people. And I'm talking people in hats, people in backpacks, people in costumes, people wearing different types of clothes, all those type of novel things that your puppy might not see every day, but will help them feel confident and in control of themselves whilst around them in the future as adults. Do a Google search for a local puppy socialization class and see what comes up. They are incredibly helpful for new puppy owners and new dog owners in general. And also, you can meet other people that have puppies that are the same age as yours that, that live near you. Exchange numbers, set up a puppy play date. It's only going to help your dog now and in the future. Encourage your puppy to be curious. Encourage them to explore the environment and interact with new things. The more that you promote confidence when your pup is a pup, the more confident they will be as an adult. Behavioral issues are the number one reason that dogs are relinquished to shelters each year. Make sure that you work with your dog at a young age to set them up for success and set your life up for success too. It's not fair to bring a dog into your life and to expect them to just fit right into your life. You should be fitting your life to your dog as well. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you learned something today. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I am here to help you and your dog live the best life possible. So thanks again for listening to me and enjoy Paw Festival 2021. <laughs>